Welcome to the second devlog of my open world space game, in which you are an alien parasite who can commandeer enemy spaceships. However, I have a problem because space is big. Really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. <clears throat> Because the game takes place across an entire galaxy, there should be a lot of spaceships to fill all the empty space. Let's see, if I have 25 sectors in a galaxy, 4 bases in each sector, and say 30 spaceships per base, I should have a whopping 3,000 3, spaceships. Oh my. Oh my. That's, that, that could be a problem. I mean, right now my game struggles to keep up with 40 spaceships fighting each other and navigating the galaxy, so even having a few hundred would be completely unplayable. So, I guess that means I'm never working on the game again. Subscribe. No, 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 no. From what I've seen, there are three different ways to address the problem of handling a large number of enemies and NPCs in an open world. Keep in mind that the player will only ever interact with spaceships near them, so there's no reason to ever spawn spaceships on the other side of the galaxy. I present to you solution number one, dynamic spawning. In this solution, the game would randomly spawn spaceships within a certain radius of the player and destroy them if they fly too far away, saving computational resources. The major downside of this approach is that there isn't any sense of persistence or continuity among the ships. It would be so much better if you saw a ship flying across the screen and then you traveled in that direction later and saw the same ship. Thus, I propose solution number two, spatial partitioning. When a spaceship is in a different sector than the player, it will become frozen in place instead of destroyed. The game will remember the locations of every ship in the game, but will only perform complex AI behavior for ships in the same sector as the player. I believe a similar approach was used in the game Reassembly, which is a huge inspiration for my game. However, that's not good enough. I think it would be a little strange if you built a ship and sent it off into the galaxy only for it not to come back because it wandered off too far and is now frozen in space. Forever. This may be a bit ambitious, but I want factions to launch attacks on each other from afar and for the player to be able to stumble upon these conflicts during gameplay, which would require ongoing ship behavior in faraway regions. Finally, the approach I settled with is solution number three, simulation. As I once heard from a great game dev monk, if you can't make it, fake it. The game's ship behavior is broken up into three levels. Real ships, which have all the functionality and behavior of a normal spaceship. Simulated ships, which keep track of their current position, a target position, and the ship's design. And the director, which randomly simulates overall populations of factions and large-scale attacks. The director initially spawns in simulated ships around space bases, also known as sources, around the galaxy. These simulated ships will constantly move toward their assigned target and spawn real ships if they come within a certain radius of the player, as well as joining nearby allied ships and flocks, though the flocks kind of look like lines of ants, so I need to fix that. Instead of evaluating the ship's position and AI behavior every frame, it does so every tick of game time, equivalent to 0.2 seconds, which I uh, borrowed from a CodeMonkey tutorial. Overall, this system lets the game simulate over 3,000 ships at a pretty high frame rate. Nice. As for generating the rest of the galaxy, these space bases are spawned procedurally across 25 sectors according to a seed that can be randomized or set by a string. I decided to take a dynamic approach for the mineable asteroids, in which the game spawns asteroids outside the player's vision and destroys them when the player flies too far away. I have plans for other generated objects too, such as warp gates, black holes, and possibly planets. Since the last devlog, I fixed the bug where every adjacent module would stick to spaceships even if their hitbox wasn't touching them, more of a design flaw than a bug, really, and I prevented the player from placing modules that aren't touching the ship in the build menu. Visually, the camera is now biased in the direction of your cursor, source objects reflect the color of their controlling faction, and I added a cool glitch effect to the screen where you infect and control an enemy ship. That's everything so far, but stay tuned for a devlog about the spaceship's adaptive AI coming soon. Thanks for watching.